calcium hydrosilicates of a mainly fibrous nature, hydrous calcium aluminates and calcium hydroxide. During the hydration of the cement, the calcium hydrosilicates develop in the form of interlacing fibers, thus determining the mechanical properties and the durability of concrete. When we add too much water, it gets between the cement grains and keeps them further apart. The fibers are less tightly interlaced and the whole material is more porous. The result is a cement paste with low strength, porous and permeable to water, as well as to the aggressive chemical agents to be found in water. On the other hand, if we reduce the amount of water in the mixture, the cement grains come closer to one another. A more dense and compact interlacing of fibers is the result. Therefore, the formation of a less... This is how concrete with high strength should be made waterproof and therefore with excellent durability. Show to be used. When this rule is not observed, deterioration of the concrete structure is inevitable with the passing of time. The latest statistics show that the most widespread cases of deterioration are due to the chemical effects of carbon dioxide in the air. In these cases, in these cases, the structure of the concrete is in very bad condition. In many points, the concrete cover has been forced out and the rebars can be seen. The aggressive agent is carbon dioxide. The calcium hydroxide present in the cement mixture creates inside the cement mass a basic environment with a pH generally above 13. In these conditions, the steel bar is covered with a stable and compact rust layer, which protects it from corrosion. This condition of passivity, however, is altered through the effect of carbonation. When the carbon dioxide present in the air penetrates into the concrete, it reacts with calcium hydroxide and neutralizes it. There is a lowering of the basicity of the environment. And with a pH below 11, the steel reinforcing bars inside the carbonated concrete are no longer protected. From the outside, water and oxygen also penetrate, thus increasing the rusting reaction of the reinforcing bars. The rust which forms occupies a volume of about six times more than the metal from which it originated, and so causes the cracking and expulsion of the concrete cover. Let's imagine we can blow up this picture and get a better look at the causes of the deterioration. As you can see, in this case carbonation has caused considerable damage, causing the cover to come away completely. Cases of carbonation are very common and almost always associated with the use of low quality concrete, porous and thus easily attacked by the carbon dioxide, water and the oxygen in the air. Chloride, in the form of calcium or sodium chloride, is used frequently to melt ice. These chlorides can do serious damage to reinforcing bars.
The thin rust layer, which encloses and protects the steel bars, remains stable and compact as long as the amount of chloride remains below 0.2-0.3% by weight of cement. If, however, the percentage of chlorides increases, the rust layer becomes porous and no longer guarantees any protection to the steel reinforcing bars. The metal undergoes localized pitting corrosion which dangerously reduces its diameter. Apart from the corrosive action on the steel rebars, these salts can also damage the concrete. Calcium chloride especially attacks the cement paste. What it does is react with the calcium hydroxide present in the cement matrix, forming calcium oxychloride hydrate. And this reaction produces an expansion. It causes swelling, cracking and spalling. The destructive action of low temperatures Sodium chloride, on the other hand, is an aggressive agent. Sodium, already present in cement or penetrating from the outside, as we can see in the cartoon, reacts in particular with certain siliceous aggregates. In this case, too, there is expansion and cracking, above all in unprotected structures or those exposed to moisture. This last kind of phenomenon, apart from roadworks on roads and motorways, feeds structures in direct contact with seawater, which also contains sodium chloride. The sea is also the place where we find, apart from sodium chloride, the most feared of aggressive agents for concrete, sulfate, which is also to be found in certain soils or natural waters. Sulfate reacts chemically with the calcium hydroxide present in the concrete mass and transforms it into the more voluminous gypsum. This product reacts in its turn with the hydrous calcium aluminates, here shown as CAH, transforming it into etringite. This transformation also results in an increase in volume in the material with a disastrous effect on the structure. In certain very special environmental conditions, the effect of the sulfate on the concrete can be even more dramatic. At a temperature of between 0 and 5 degrees Celsius, with relative humidity of over 95%, and in the presence of carbon dioxide, the sulfate combines with calcium hydroxide and transforms it into gypsum. The gypsum, in its turn, reacts with the calcium silicate hydrates, here indicated as CSH, and the calcium carbonate CaCO3, producing thormacite. Thormacite breaks down concrete, changing its internal characteristics completely. Observation with a scanning electron microscope shows that the cement paste has been completely broken down. Natural thermal excursions can also cause deterioration of concrete. The most serious results are seen in freezing wet. As the liquid water contained in the concrete mass is transformed into ice, it expands and its volume increases by about 9%. The increase in volume causes internal stress. When this internal stress is repeated cyclically, the effect on the structure is disastrous. 